Hey guys, welcome to a new video. My name is Amber and today I've got an art haul for you. Um, this is an art haul that I should have made a few weeks ago now as I've already started working in this sketchbook that I'm showing you at the moment. Um, so this is the art haul um, of all the things that I got for my birthday in June. So yes, this is definitely overdue this, this video. Um, so this is a Hannah Mueller, I'm just getting straight into it today. <laughs> um, this is a Hannah Mueller watercolor sketchbook in the A4 size. And I love this sketchbook. I already showed you this in my last video because I recorded the footage for this art haul before I started working in it, obviously. But um, in my last video, I did a little tour of like what I'm up to in my sketchbooks at the moment. And I've already started working in this. So if you wanna see like how it looks with watercolor on the pages and mixed media, then go and check that video out. But yeah, the Hannah Mueller cold pressed A4 watercolour paper. I love it, but I love my Arches paper more still and I wish Arches did a beautiful sketchbook like that, but they don't. So Hannah Mueller, it is. <laughs> um, here's some Posca pens. So this is like my first proper little Posca pen collection being started here. Since this, like since recording this video, I have actually bought quite a few more Posca pens because I'm now obsessed and I love using them for mixed media. But um, for my birthday this year, me and my husband went up to London and he just gave me some money to go to all the art shops and I could just buy near enough what I wanted, <laughs> which was absolutely amazing. So this video is all of the lovely, delicious art supplies that I bought. So I got myself a few Posca pens. Um, and also I went to Brighton a few days later on a little girls trip and there's a Cass Art at Brighton. So this is also like a few art supplies from my trip to Brighton, Cass Art and also London. Um, I went to the London Graphic Centre, I went to Cass Art and I also went to Choosing Keeping. So the bulk of this video will be me swatching my new watercolours out from Choosing Keeping but here's a few Neo Colour 2 crayons that I bought to add to my collection. I've got the 40 set of colours and there was just a few that I felt like I um, I needed, like I, I always wanted to reach for but I didn't have them in my set so I just picked those up. Here is a beautiful teal colour gouache, I couldn't think what it was called then. The colour is turquoise blue and it's from Windsor and Newton. I used to love buying big sets of things, like I'd always go to an art shop or go online and want to buy a big set of things, but now I just like to like buy a few colours and build collections up over time. That makes me more happy than just buying a big set of colours I never use. Um, this was just a white gel pen and also one of those black wing matte graphite pencils which is nothing special to me actually I thought that they were supposed to be really amazing um, and I guess it's a good graphite pencil but mm, nothing different to what I've really used before here are some Dr. PH Martin's um, Radiant watercolours. I've wanted to try these for ages and I really do love them. They're great for like in that sketchbook because it doesn't matter about light fastness too much, but they're a lot of fun because they're really, really vibrant. Here is a book from one of my favourite artists and I have all of her books actually. And um, yeah, this is a new one that just came out and it's watercolour textures I think well it's all about creating textures with watercolor and um, it's very insightful and I've learned loads of stuff about watercolor and textures through her and her videos anyway so that is a lovely new book to add to my collection if you're interested in watercolors and like magical art then I can't it, I cannot recommend her enough her name is Anna Calderon Anna Victoria Calderon this is something that I wanted for my new sort of abstract mixed media art. It's called a Catalyst Wedge and um, it's pretty cool. It's cool for like making marks and stuff. Um, I also got this porcelain palette. I 
I have one porcelain watercolour palette, um, but it's quite small, so I saw this in Cassart and I really wanted to grab one of those, and so far I am using, using it all the time. A cool little pencil case I got from a kitchen shop in Brighton. They had so many cool like pencil cases and just cool little arty tidbits in the little shops at Brighton. Um, I'd love to go back there actually because it's like a treasure trove in all of those shops. This is, um, as you can see on, <laughs> on the packaging, it's the Cardi Handmade Cotton Rag Watercolour Paper and at the moment it's one of my favourite papers. It's very strange, it works differently to a normal cotton watercolour paper but um, I love that the edges are decalled, I love the price and I just think it's a lot of fun to work on. So I've actually just made a handmade art journal with this paper in and I'll be showing you that very soon. And here is where like the main event is I guess. So first of all I had I bought this little tin out of the London Graphic Centre because I love a nice tin <laughs> and I saw this and I thought oh I could buy all the oil pastels I want and then I could store them in this cute tin. So I really love oil pastel work. I still haven't shared any of it on this YouTube channel with you I don't think. Um, I've got the footage but I just haven't got around to making the actual videos yet but me and my husband stood there and we picked all these colours to make myself a lovely set of Sennelier oil pastels and they are delicious, honestly. If you like oil pastels, I suppose these are quite fancy. Um, they just are so, so buttery and soft and so much fun to play with. So I got myself a nice little set of those and then these are all from Choosing Keeping. Um, if I was a good YouTuber, I would have thought to take some video of me walking around these shops and like the shelves and all that sort of stuff. But I was just in awe at being in this shop and I totally forgot to take video of anything. <laughs> um, so this is all you're getting, I'm afraid. But I hope you're enjoying so far this straight to the point video. Um, so in Choosing Keeping they have the Kurataki watercolours and I got a few sets. I was really not supposed to get this many. Um, I, was, I, was, I was planning on just going in and getting one of their seasonal palettes and then one of their like decade palettes. So they do, is it decades? Is decades 10 years? Um, decades or eras? No, it's got to be decades, right? Hang on, I need to Google this. Yes, so Google says decades is 10 years. <laughs> um, so they do the decade palettes and it starts with the 1920s and I think it ends with the 1980s. And then they also do the seasonal palettes as well. So they have a spring, summer, autumn and winter palette. And I got the summer one because the colors in that made me so happy. And in Choosing Keeping, the... Um, they have the swatches out on the shelves as well so you can see exactly what sort of colours you're going to get in your palette but it was the oranges and those turquoise, lovely turquoise blues that got me in this one. I love so much how this shop sells the sets like this. I just think the little curated palettes are so beautiful and the little boxes that they come in are lovely and also just um, that they come with a little piece of paper so you can swatch on. I love that. I think it's really nice. So I'm going to start off doing some swatching now and um, what did I want to say? Oh yeah, I don't know whether these are the same kind of Ganzai watercolours as like, you know you can get um, the Ganzai Tambi, Kurataki, Ganzai Tambi, Art Nouveau set for instance. I feel like they're, this, they're obviously the same kind of watercolour and they look exactly the same but I don't know if they're the same exact brand or something like that if that makes sense. You might be wondering what the hell I'm going on about but um, yeah I love, I love them. At the moment these are all my favourite watercolours and just here I'm just showing you that um, it says 53 on my pan but on the piece of paper it says 35 so I don't know whether that's like a wrong colour that I got 
or what but I just thought you know transparency and all that I just was showing you that so you could see and if you got a set I would like to know if yours was the same or not so I'm gonna start doing some swatching now and this was the set that I wasn't supposed to get but I got it for one colour basically and that's gonna sound like I'm an absolute spoiled person but it was my birthday <laughs> um, it was the pink in the bottom left corner so this is the 1920 set and I love greens anyways and um, it's got a lovely gold in it and also like a pearly pink sort of colour so really lovely set but it's the pink in the bottom left that looks more red on camera than it actually is that I loved and I thought you know what this I'm, I'm going to have this set too because <laughs> I I got to the counter to, to pay for the other sets and then I was like actually I'll just add this one quickly um, but so far I have used these sets so much and I love them because I've been doing a lot of like colour palette challenges lately and working with colours that I would never usually pick so it's by doing that by going from like using colour palettes to help me choose colours I'm actually using a lot of my paints that I have never used before or would never even you know think to use so this is that pink colour um, as I said it looks very pink uh, it looks very red really on camera but it's actually such a beautiful hot pink colour and I don't know whether you can buy these open stock or not because I searched for it in there and I know you can buy the Kurataki Ganzai Tambi watercolours but I can't find these and on the back it's all in Japanese so I feel like they they are their own sort of brand and you can't buy them open stock but if anybody knows anything about this any information I feel like um, me being the person who's making a video about this I should know but I don't so can you help <laughs> um, yeah and also I don't really know a lot about like colours of the decades and stuff but I'm a bit confused as to why these are 1920s colours as well so also if you could help me with that <laughs> I asked my mum and she was she was like oh yeah definitely 1920s not that she was born in the 20s <laughs> um but she was she said about the 80s one she was like oh definitely 80s because that has got like a really bright luminous orange in it as well so yeah so that's the first colour set that I got and did I not just say that I don't like buying sets of things anymore but I didn't have much of a choice and a set of watercolours is like totally different to anything else especially watercolours like this um, in a beautiful curated set so this one I think is the 1960s palette and I really love this one I love the orange it's got like a really nice almost lavendery kind of pink and also the khaki green as well so um, I knew I was going to get this one straight away and a lovely deep purple it's also got in there but I've already got down to like I've already hit the pan in a few of my colors now so I could see myself going back there in the future once I've used a few of my colours up and buying some of these sets again because they're really lovely. Another another thing is, I don't know whether they're even light fast or not to be honest. I've been creating art with them and I should think some colours are light fast. But other colours like the pinks, like the really bright pinks, I'm just not sure. So. I love using them in my sketchbook and stuff and um, I also do use them to create my proper art but I wish I knew the answer to that question too. <laughs> All I know is the Kurataki watercolours are made, I'm reading this from the um, online now and these are not even Kurataki so Choosing Keeping presents seven exclusive special editions of eight shades of Ganzai. This Japanese alternative to standard European watercolours is not dissimilar to gouache and is made by a 100 year old paint maker in Japan. So they're really interesting. If you haven't tried these, you can actually pick up some sets of the, um, the Kurataki watercolors for quite cheap, like 20 pounds. Um, and I think I got my Art Nouveau set for about 20 pounds, which is really cheap for how many colors that come in that set. 
So this is the 1980s set and my mum was like, yes, this is definitely 80s with that pop of neon orange and obviously that would 100% not be light fast, um, but perhaps I should do my own light fast testing of these. That would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Because then we would know. Uh, but yeah, the um, the pans, it's like you don't, I, I like to have quite a few colours of these because for one thing they're beautiful colours and they're just fun to use straight out of the pan. They are really similar to gouache. You can use them really thick or you can use them really thin as a wash. You can mix them. They're quite creamy. Some of the colours are quite creamy. Um, yeah, they're just really unique and I've never seen anything like it before other than these pans. I also just love how they look, like they really are a large pan, they're bigger than a normal full pan of watercolour and no, they're just a lot of fun and um, I don't know, I could rave about them some more maybe. <laughs> Do you have any sets of these watercolours? If you do, let me know which ones you've got because I feel like over time I will probably collect them all now. <laughs> all of them from Choosing Keeping. The boxes are beautiful, the colours are beautiful. It was very close um, between the summer palette and the winter palette for me because I loved the colours in the winter palette as well. They're so like cool and I don't know just really pretty uh, but it felt a bit weird buying the winter palette when it was just about to be summer so here is the summer palette so I did end up getting a few um, duplicates as well which was unfortunate but is also not really unfortunate because then as I said I've hit pan on a few of them now so it's nice that I've got like, I use a lot of gold lately and I think I got a duplicate of two golds and then a different kind of gold and I think also a duplicate of one of the reds as well I, I got and I use a lot of red too so I don't mind having the duplicates and if it meant getting more of the lovely sets <laughs> and being a spoiled little birthday girl then I, did, I, did, I was quite happy. My husband didn't mind either <laughs> which was handy but this first two rows on the summer palette oh I really really enjoyed the colors I love orange the lovely yellow and then all the like turquoise and blue on the second row I could make a painting just with those colors and it would be beautiful I think something I've really been enjoying lately is not worrying about using too many colours so I really like to use a colour palette for instance I've got the colour cube by Sarah Renee Clark and I've also been making my own colour palettes lately too um, so if you wanted to have a look at my colour palettes you could go onto my Instagram and see those but I love just having a colour palette of five or six colours and then I'm not allowed to use any other colours but on those palettes and that's been such an enjoyable way to make art because as I said, I'm using colours that I wouldn't normally use. I'm surprising myself. I am using watercolours that I have had sitting around for a long time, barely being used. Um, and it takes the decision making out of my art. So I pick a colour palette, I pick my colours out, which I also really enjoy, matching my colours to the colour palette. And then I just get painting and that, I'm, I don't know, that's what I'm enjoying most about art at the moment. You can see a lot of the art that I've been doing just with colour palettes on my Instagram. So that watercolour sketchbook I showed you in the beginning, that Hannah Mueller watercolour sketchbook, I've been using that for like experimenting with abstract art and different colour palettes. And I'm, and I'm slowly filling that up with so many different colour experiments and trying all my art supplies out and I'm also getting into abstract art, it's just a lot of fun so um, if you wanted to see that you could check out my last video um, or also my Instagram which I will link down below. I'll also link down below um, links to like Amazon and Jackson's perhaps and also Choosing Keeping um, I think only the Amazon links might be affiliate links for now, but 
just letting you know that I'll be linking some links down so you can have a look at all the art supplies in this video but they won't all be affiliate links and I don't just want money I just enjoy sharing things on YouTube sharing my joy and my passion for art <laughs> and I know that if you're watching this and you've made it to this far in the video you also have a lot of passion and joy for art and art supplies and I really appreciate appreciate you watching today thank you so so much don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment and a like if you enjoyed the video and i shall see you in my next video thanks so much for watching guys bye